hear those uh, jackals howling. Yeah, yeah, they enjoying the peace and quiet. There's no tourists here. <laughs> There's uh, roads are quiet and aircraft are absent now for two or three months since the virus break broke yeah. out and lockdown started rolling around the world. So yeah, it's a wonderful time for nature. It's a privilege. Black, really good to be out here with you, Franco. Yeah, Thanks like for visiting. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> we missed the company. <laughs> eh? um, yeah, so so it's obviously deeply problematic from an economical point of view because yeah. you know we've got to pay for nature, and uh, you guys are the are the uh, the connection between the uh, potential for these types of game reserves to succeed or fail. So yeah, it's good to have you out here and having the opportunity to chat and and um, meet with some folks who are helping with the uh, promotion of these wonderful areas and experiences that we have on offer. So yeah, let's, um, I think we should uh, hope for the best, but also plan for the worst. It's um, every day there's news of the, sometimes it's a bit more positive, sometimes it's a little bit negative. But we're learning and hopefully in these coming days and weeks, scientists around the world and uh, solutions to possibly cures to coronavirus, COVID-19, even a vaccine. Yeah. That's clearly the holy grail that can, that can rescue this situation. It's just how, you know, how to get um, the message out there to everybody, you know, like uh, these times are tough. Um, you know, at a, at, a, at a level where we're sitting here, everybody's on lockdown. Um, what, um, what we're trying to achieve is to, to try and get the message out there and, mm. and let everybody know that, you know, conservation is not sleeping, conservation is not on lockdown. We're trying to get it uh, mm. going and still make sure that when everybody comes back, that um, they're coming back to, mm. uh, to still come back to those pristine areas and these areas would have had some great time mm. to have recuperate and uh, also yeah. you know it's a it's it's a win-win uh, situation that um, you know the the air is cleaner mm. for some time now and uh, animals mm. have got a bit of peace and quiet too True. <laughs> um, but again you know um, we need we need um, that I mean to put it at a, at a on a financial term we mm. need that assistance and that the travel of people to come and visit for for that to to be sustainable yeah and in that sense um these areas will will, will thrive um mm. so we uh, i think everybody out there um if if times get better mm. We, mm. we start having some tourists again absolutely you know spot on Franco. you know that that's the success of the namibia conservation story and probably the most extraordinary turnaround and comeback of nature in modern times worldwide and it has been funded by your guests that we've hosted we've um, their, their financial contribution has resulted in a conservation economy and that's paying for vast areas um, an extraordinary estate across the country from boundary to boundary where landowners um, communities government other NGOs private sector partners have had the wherewithal on account of that income to invest in sustainable utilization of natural resources. Um, and that's the, that's the driver. That is incredibly vital. And in the absence of that, you know, is it going to roll back? What can we do to reduce the injury? Um, can, you know, will these lands be lost to the plow and the cow um, in the absence? Or will there be deforestation to try and monetize forests? And even worse, to open cost mining for the rich minerals that the world seeks for cell phones and other devices. We, in a critical, you know, balance, uh, it can swing badly if we, if this uh, economic situation doesn't stabilize. Yeah. So yeah, the opportunity to, you know, communicate this, I think is, is we've got to, um, folks have got to understand that there's a lot, um, not just in Namibia, you know, worldwide <clears throat> nature-based travel is, flame out you know yeah. the engine's dead um, understandably it's a terrible terrible pandemic hopefully we can learn to live with it and to travel with it yeah. that we can get some income obviously local 
market is on everybody's mind at the moment as lockdown um, eases in the country. Um, but wow, um, Namibia's economy has been faltering for some years. Um, we don't have incredibly high expectations of that. You know, 10, 15 years ago, we ran specials for Namibians and it, it was great. But I tell you what, it doesn't pay the bills. Yeah. This land, the conservation, the anti-poaching units, the commitment, the daily upkeep and protection, it, it's extraordinarily yeah. expensive. Um, so, yeah, we, we desperately need international support. In, that's from the region, from the globe, from the key source markets. Um, yeah, so what we need to do next, I guess, is, yeah, pay attention to what is going to be safe operations. Yeah. Um, and as a, as a united industry in Namibia, the safari and tour and travel industry, to develop systems that are confidence inspiring so that guests feel comfortable that they can travel here in reasonable safety yeah. without you know, high risk. But it's going to test us, you know, the rural people, they've lost income, they've lost revenue, they've lost um, jobs and mass retrenchment. And there's going to be a great hunger stalking the land. Um, food security will be tested. We've emerged from several years of drought. Um, so, wow, you know, we're in for some character building times. Absolutely. Clearly, if we can get some hard currency, some travel, international travel. Yeah. And I think the airlines, the international airline industry are likely to be the leaders. We're going to depend on them figuring out how to travel safely, yeah. how to you know, get folks to be confident that they can travel long haul, you know, not be turned back at the airport on, on arrival, or to have a system that will accommodate them if they are compromised. So, yeah, we We've got to get creative um, and work together as a, as, a, as a team, as an industry, and in every respect. We've always had a great Namibian spirit, team spirit, and uh, um, it, but this time we need to get a layer of innovation and figure out how to develop and run operations um, nationally and right here on the property. So we're working throughout the country with you know, hundreds of lodge owners and hoteliers to develop a standard and a protocol that can provide confident and safe operations. So here on Gava, we shut down pretty quickly um, for good reason. Even before the national lockdown, we um, made a firm decision that we were going to close the property for a fixed period in order to protect the staff and the, and the anti-poaching unit, yeah. who we cannot afford to get sick. Yeah. So Angava went into, into self-imposed lockdown. Um, and we chose to do 90 days to allow the first wave of the virus to pass. Yeah. And to this point, we've succeeded. As you know, Namibia succeeded yeah. incredibly with um, very low, to, at this point in time, a very low infection um, and no deaths. Yeah. And Angava, we've been spared. But yeah, what remains is how those guests are going to reach us. That's right. And that's, that is, we're at the mercy of global forces and global dis and authorities around the world, whether they're prepared to open up. Yeah. We missing the tourists out here yeah. because not just the money, but the company. It's lonely being in lockdown, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's fun having you guys around and, and uh, not having to do a Zoom meeting and, you know, um, we can, uh, we social animals. Um, we uh, arguably uh, evolved in the African savanna. Learned to walk upright out here in the grasslands. And we paid attention when there were carnivores around. Yeah. We were on the menu. Absolutely. Hey? <laughs> yeah, you've had a few close calls. And um, you've got to pay attention when you're on the menu. Mm. Um, that's how we operate. We know we've been around for 30 years offering uh, open vehicle safaris and guided walks yeah. and good operations and good standards and good training. Well, Rob, 
thanks for joining us and uh, thank you for that insightful um, yeah. information about you know the, the tough times we're facing and <laughs> and the way forward yeah thank you Franco it's, it's a testing time let's um, be smart and work together and cooperate and um, to our roots we're a social species we need each other This is a fine evening sitting underneath the Namibian sky, looking at all the beautiful stars and enjoying the warmth of this beautiful fire. And uh, we're just reminiscing about the 10 days that we had here at the Ongava Game Reserve. Um, just looking back at the beautiful moments, amazing and unique experiences that we had on this game reserve. It was awesome. Can't believe that it's already uh, day 10. We're leaving tomorrow. So, so Franco, can you, um, can you tell me what was your highlight of the, of the stay? Wow, my highlight was really sitting on one of the planes out um, with, the, uh, with the white rhinos. And uh, as we followed them to the water hole, it was just amazing seeing the three of them drinking and uh, it just it just makes you think about a, a species that um, if not uh, looked after it might disappear and um, having that opportunity also to to uh, be out there with you and you know just trying to solve the world's problems of how we can better conserve and protect these animals. That was just one of, uh, or actually my highlight that I had out there. Um, has the week given you insights into sort of the conservation that uh, that Ongava is sort of doing behind the scenes? Has it given you some sort of some you know, insights into into stuff that you maybe didn't know was happening? Absolutely. I think it's uh, it's it's really uh, been an amazing experience to. Uh, to, to go out, for example, with the, the anti-poaching units and uh, to also have found out that they, they had a canine unit that, uh, that I didn't know about. And uh, the dogs, of course, they're amazing. These, these, these animals um, have so many senses that we're not in tune with. And uh, again, the connection of the dogs with their handlers and... Uh, it was it was incredible, and that's that's really that's something that I will take with me, and uh, I you know it's something that you won't forget. It's it's really it was an amazing experience and unique as well. I just I just wanted to ask Mike because Mike uh, was actually um, about to go and leave just before you guys arrived, and yeah. he uh, he decided to stay so he could engage with you and um, <laughs> and uh, and be part of this whole whole project. Yeah. So uh, Mike, did did you find the the last sort of 10 days was beneficial. Did you learn a lot? Did you have a good time? Yeah, I actually feel privileged to be involved in the whole project. And uh, as you know, I've been, it has been a long time since I guided. At least I had the opportunity to put my skills into practice as I had to help track down rhino, lion, and so on. Not only that, but also just to get involved into how important it is to actually keep our environment or our nature to keep it going. And <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I really feel honored to, to be involved in the whole project. And not only that, but you see, it's like for a guide like me or any guide, every day is different. Mm -hmm. So. Whenever I went out with the guys, I actually observed a lot of things, animal behavior, tracking skills, and what's most, most, what was mostly important for me was uh, the, the camera. These guys are professional. 
I think uh, they showed me they are very, very professional, and very serious. And I uh, was lucky enough to actually uh, get some advice from them also. So my, my photographic skills are also upgraded now, thanks to you guys. And of course, you, you mentioned that it was your, your first time on, on camera. On camera, yeah. It's, <laughs> you yeah, were, like you the, first in the, the first interview I remember when I had it in front of uh, the watering hole. I was talking to the camera and I was like, you know, we as guides, uh, we, we always uh, feel like if we talk to the guests, you get all these different types of reactions. Mm. Um, like they're seated talking to this uh, solid thing and I'm expecting <laughs> for a reaction, you know, <laughs> questions, you know, yeah. and then you talk and then the camera is just looking at you, keep on going and then you don't know what to talk <laughs> anymore. And it's like, but it's another experience, I think, that was needed and um, I picked up on it, got better at it and so on. So, yeah, awesome. I think it was needed in my profession also, you know. It's not only talking to guests. Sometimes you need to have that selfie and talk to yourself or talk to the phone. But, yeah, it's, it's something that I never experienced. But at least uh, I worked on it, getting better, I think. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think you did very well. Okay. You, it, you were natural, man. For me, it's I, to be honest with you, I feel privileged to be involved in the whole project, and uh, thanks to you guys. And I don't regret uh, staying too. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. I think your brother may um, be envious and maybe slightly jealous. Yeah, I think uh, he is. He's actually right. He, he's I, at the back. I believe he's here. Yeah, <laughs> so he should have stayed as well. Yeah. Um, I oh think it's, uh, Franco, just from, from Angava's side, I think, uh, it, you know, I'd obviously like to thank Ultimate Safaris for, you know, initiating this project with the partners. I think it's been a very successful 10 days. Mm -hmm. And I think what it's, at least from my side, I'm hoping it highlights is the, the efforts that are put into, you know, to conserving wildlife in Namibia. Yeah. And uh, the sort of importance of that in in, in our, our, our future and the the integration of conservation with research and tourism and the importance of all of those it's almost like what we are like a poiki pot you know yeah, you've got yeah. conservation tourism yes you know security research there's there's feet holding this pot yeah. up and uh, and each one of those is integrated into this model and at the moment we're we're missing this yeah. tourism element because of the pandemic yeah. um, and uh, but the other the other legs still have to function, even without that Absolutely. that uh, that tourism element or that hospitality element. So, I think, and I'm hoping that these um, these productions that you guys have put such a lot of effort into, and we've put effort into, will bring home to to people who are watching them the importance yeah. of conservation in Namibia and you know what's still happening on the ground yeah. here, and that we need to maintain that and to and to continue funding that and making sure that we protect these you know these uh, there's an elephant at the waterhole protecting animals like that. Oh yeah, um, you know, for future generations and uh, and for Namibia. Absolutely. But thank you. Absolutely, that's that's fantastic, man. And also thank you for for hosting us and allowing us to be here, to um, you know to to take all the footage and and of course, um, it's again in tough times like these, like you said, it's. You know the the ball of conservation has to keep on rolling to ensure um, that you know all these uh, all these species are are taken care of and of course it links into to um, to all integral you know whether it be the local communities and uh, um, the the animals and whoever has um, you know stakeholding um, that that all makes uh, makes a huge difference so again thank you for, for for having us here and uh yeah it's it's been awesome it's been really great i yeah. think it's i think i speak for mike and all of the yeah. team it's our pleasure yeah, and we hopefully good. see you later in the year again absolutely yeah. that's that's fantastic just uh, one last advice yeah to to the whole team please don't send three guides to go take some footage so they, will, <laughs> they will spend 20 minutes just hiding something 
that's yeah, we what spend, we do. We spend almost 30 minutes hiding your snake, <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, Tim, and Franco. Yeah, oh, awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. No, it brings us chiefs. back to our <laughs> grassroots. Huh? Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us on the Ongava Game Reserve. And uh, please do join us next time for our episodes where we'll be exploring some more areas around Namibia. Take care.